the opportunity to host this most grandest festival, which is Sivaguru Dev Yasa Puja in Malaysia, Figueiredo. Actually, in the beginning, uh, we had hosted this festival, the Vyasa Puja, Sulaguru Dev Vyasa Puja festival in Malaysia. That was summer in the year 1999. But we were so immature, we didn't know much about Vyasa Puja and we had the opportunity to celebrate this festival in that year. Uh, we just thought that it was just a happy birthday for Sira Gurudev and we just celebrated very simple. But today, uh, in the year 2009, we are given this opportunity again for Sila to host this festival. And, um, and this is all coming by the mercy, costless mercy from Vyasadev, from the chain of Guru Parampara, and uh, which is showering, and finally Sila Gurudev showering all his mercy to all of us around the world. So we want to thank Gurudev for coming and uh, giving us a chance to serve you. So I, I can't express, I don't know how to express, so forgive me if I've not expressed it in a proper way. And uh, we want to also thank all sannyasis who have taken so much of trouble also to travel from many parts of the world and come and make this occasion uh, a, a huge success. We want to thank uh, all sannyasis also for coming and making this and helping us in so many ways. And also to uh, Smati Shamrani Didi for also coming. She's been also coming from, from the beginning and inspiring us so much in many ways and and taking trouble in each and every uh, preaching side of uh, our movement in Kuala Lumpur. So we want to thank you so much also. And finally also we want to thank to all devotees around the world who have gathered here today. We hope to fill up the hall in the next few days because uh, many devotees are also making some preparation uh, which we are going to celebrate Shobha Yatra in Johobaru. So they have, uh, they are making many ground arrangements there and a few uh, other devotees are also coming. So we want to thank you for coming and uh, making this whole thing a huge success. And if there's any mistake, Please forgive us on behalf of the management of this uh, Vyasa Puja team. Uh, we have many uh, devotees who have, uh, who have given their whole heart and gone out of the way to make this whole thing a success. So we want to thank the management also for coming and helping out in, in making this whole thing a huge success. So if there's any faults or any mistake, please forgive us and um, please have a good stay here and I hope I, we have did our best. So without any delay, I am here. Watch it. Yeah. Um, also, tomorrow we'll be leaving for Shobha Yatra in uh, jo Skudai, which is uh, just close to Johobaru town, Johobaru state. So all buses would leave at 2 p.m. from from the hotel here. So please register your names so that we would know how many is coming in the bus and so we can allocate the necessary amount of buses to, to Skudai for the Sobayatra. So please register your name with Krishna Priya Didi. She's in charge of the names, and uh, please give your names there. 
and uh, also uh, okay so program would be at uh, uh, 5, 5, 5 p.m. Uh, in Skodai for the Shobayatra but buses would leave at 2 p.m. because of traffic and also the, this, the distance to get there so this is happening tomorrow and the next day Harinam is uh, those who uh, is uh, wanting to take Harinam or those who know someone who is taking please inform them Harinam is on 25th at at 9 a.m. at uh, Sri Gurudev's place and also on the 25th program would continue here uh, as usual in the morning Mangalarati and followed with some sannyasi speaking and um, at the evening Gurudev would come again as usual at uh, 4.30 between 4.30 to 5 bhajans will start and Gurudev will come at 5 p.m. And then on 26th of, um, uh, which is falling on Monday, is uh, Sri Gurudev Vyasa Puja celebration. So prayers will be held in the morning. So please attend the morning Mangal Arati and it will be followed with the morning programs. And 27 program will be the last day program here. And on the 20th, 28th, devotees will be leaving back to their hometowns. So that's the announcement for now. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhupada. My big girl. What is our mission? Place 
to be here with all of us. Actually, over the years, as uh, Vijay Krishna Prabhu was explaining, Srila Gurudev has traveled since 1996 all over the Earth's surface, traversing the globe. Uh, actually, more than 28 times now, he has gone on world tours uh, and he has covered all corners of the earth. Mm. What is the reason why this personality is doing this? Why is he traveling so extensively? So, the answer is that in the Vedic literatures, it is described that all the souls in this world, they have forgotten their eternal identities. They're called conditioned souls, jivas. They have forgotten that they are actually eternally related with the Supreme Lord who has created everything. They are His parts and parcels. And they are meant to have an eternal relationship of loving devotion with the Supreme Lord. But the living entities in this world have forgotten this identity of theirs and now they have taken on this temporary illusory identity of this one temporary life and they have been given a material body uh, made out of the gross elements of this world and a subtle body and they are actually rotating in a cycle of birth and death for many, many, many lifetimes. A long chain of repeated taking birth, growing old, uh, suffering, dying, and again taking birth. This is the plight of all souls in this material world. Because this material world is the external energy of the Supreme Lord. It is called His Maya Potency. And the jivas have turned away from their eternal relationship with the Supreme Creator. So now they are living in forgetfulness and struggling very hard in the material world. So the uh, Supreme Lord, out of His causeless mercy, He wants to help all jiva souls because they are His eternal parts and parcels. So therefore, the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, He makes so many arrangements to help the conditioned souls to come to Him. First of all, in the beginning of the creation, the Supreme Lord Himself uh, gives inspiration in the heart of the first created living being, Lord Brahma, and He imparts the eternal transcendental knowledge of divine spiritual existence to Him. He makes him aware of all transcendental truths. And this knowledge becomes disseminated down through a long chain of spiritual teachers called spiritual masters, gurus. And this knowledge comes down since time immemorial, preserved in such a perfect chain of realized masters. Also the Lord manifests himself within every jiva soul's heart as his intimate guide, internal guide and friend, called Antaryami, Paramatma. And he travels with every jiva soul through many, many different conditions of life within this world. But the conditioned souls still, even though the Lord has made this arrangement, they cannot perceive the presence of the Lord within their heart, and they are also not aware of the Vedic knowledge. Therefore, the Supreme Lord manifests Himself in His most merciful form, and that is as the Mahant Swarupa, a very great pure devotee of Himself, a pure devotee of Krishna. He comes in this form, and He takes the role of Guru to help the conditioned souls understand their eternal relationship with Krishna. This is actually the most merciful manifestation of the Lord within the entire creation when He appears before the conditioned souls as Sri Guru. 
So Sri Guru has no other purpose in this world uh, than helping the conditioned souls to revive their eternal relationship with Krishna. And by, what he does is he imparts the divine wisdom of transcendental knowledge, just like we just sang a song uh, written by Srila Narottam Das Thakur in which he's telling about the power of the speaking of a pure devotee. There he says, Guru Mukha Padmavakya Chittete Kodiya Aikya Arna Kodihomani Asha. He's praying as a disciple of Guru that may the words emanating from the lotus mouth of my Sri Guru Dev purify my heart. May my heart become one with them. Uh, and therefore, by developing attachment for the lotus feet of Sri Guru, all of my desires, my spiritual desires can become fulfilled. So Sri Guru is the most munificent personality because he has nothing to take from this world or from anyone. He has come as the supreme representative of the Supreme Lord, the giver, the greatest giver. And what is he coming to give? He is coming to give transcendental love of God, Krishna Prem. So he himself is representing this long line of spiritual teachers. Uh, they are all perfected, realized souls, and whatever knowledge they give is perfectly realized and is completely in conjunction with the Vedic knowledge. So therefore, they travel throughout the world just to give opportunity for the conditioned souls to come, to hear this divine message, to become purified, and to attain this great opportunity to develop love for Krishna. So Srila Gurudev, out of his causeless mercy, he has traveled so many, many times around the world. Even in old age, he is still coming to inspire us, to give in spiritual injection into our hearts of his disciples and of so many newcomers also. Therefore, we are very happy, very honored that in his presence today, we are sitting to hear the divine message of Sri Krishna Katha and to hear the message of all of our Guru Parampara. This festival is also a very special occasion because in this festival the Divine Appearance Day of our beloved Guru Dev will be observed and we will see how Srila Guru Dev manifests this knowledge of coming down from the original author of all the Vedas, Srila Vyas Dev himself who is an incarnation of Krishna, Krishna Dvaipayana Vyas Dev. So every year, devotees come and gather in different parts of the world. For many, many years, we have held this festival in uh, Hawaii, and then last year, this festival took place in Australia. And now this year again, uh, the opportunity has come to observe this festival in Malaysia. So it is an international festival, not only just a local festival for the Malaysian devotees, it is for all the devotees throughout the world. Also the cameras will be filming and live, uh, they will be disseminating, broadcasting this, this uh, uh, program live every evening to hundreds and thousands of devotees watching all throughout the world. So we're very fortunate and we're praying at the lotus feet of our beloved Gurudev that we can develop just a, a, a firm devotion for his lotus feet and that we can dedicate ourselves completely to following his teachings within our life and staying on this pathway of pure Shuddha Krishna Bhakti. Srila Gurudev Ki Jai, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. First of all, I offer my most humble obeisances at the Lotus feet of my Diksha Guru, Parmanad Yupan Guru Yupad Sri Srimad A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. And then again, I offer my most humble obeisances at the lotus feet of my Shiksha and Sanyas Guru Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. 
So it is a very great privilege, honor, opportunity to serve the lotus feet of the Vaishnava Sarvabhuma, the leader of all the Vaishnavas in the world, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, by coming here to say a few words about his glories and his glorious mission. So, the mission of Sri Guru is that he comes to this world only to give his association to the living entities. He comes here to help everyone. Bhakta, Bhakti, and Bhagavan descend from the spiritual world in order to give the opportunity for all living entities to make advancement on this path. Within the heart of the sadhu, within the heart of the Mahapurush, Mahabharata, like Srila Gurudev, Bhakti and Bhagavan reside. Therefore, in the song that we just sang, as I have spoken before, Prema Bhakti Jahavaiti, uh, their bodies are emanating prem. They are just broadcasting prem to all living entities. Sri Guru Charana Padma. Sri means praying. Guru Charana Padma. The lotus feet of the Guru are the abode of praying. Praying to Sri Krishna. Because Krishna is residing within his heart. Radhika is within his heart. The gopis, the Vrajvasis, Nanda, Yasoda, Goa Cowherd boys, all living entities are there. So wherever this personality goes, he is broadcasting the praying of the land of Braj. This is the main mission of Srila Gurudev. He is not here to give any kind of bhakti. There are so many kinds of bhakti. Huh? There is karma vishra bhakti, jnana vishra bhakti. There is bhakti influenced by tamagun, ragagun, sattvagun. But Srila Gurudev is only one pointed, he has one interest, and that is to distribute Braj Rasi praying from the land of Braj. Braj Rasi praying not only to Sri Krishna but to Srimati Radhika. He is giving us the most high, powerful benediction that any Acharya has given. So, this wonderful mission of Srila Gurudev, even in his advanced age, where he is traveling everywhere throughout the world to distribute this most merciful Rajrasi Prem, huh? that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came to give this. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world to give this, to distribute what no one else has distributed before. And he distributes this through the agencies of his great Mahapurush Mahabharavas like Srila Guru. So we are getting an opportunity to associate with such a great personality as Srila Guru to render service unto him and to hear the transcendental sound vibration from his lotus lips. And this mission of his traveling everywhere in the world and giving his association to everyone should be extended by each and every one of us. We have to assist Sri Guru in his mission. Uh, Vishramba Seva, intimate service to Sri Guru is to understand what is his heart's desire, what it is that he wants to accomplish. Sri Guru is told so many times that please distribute my literatures everywhere. Please arrange for these wonderful festivals. Please open up these preaching centers everywhere. Please engage completely in the service of Sri Mati Radhika and engage in the service of Sri Guru. Sri Guru Devas asked us all to take up these responsibilities. So this is very important that all the disciples should understand that Pariprasnena, the inquiry, only becomes complete when there is Sevaya, when one offers service to the Guru. Not just lip service, not just words of glorification, but actual sacrifice of time, of energy, of love and affection, of trying to distribute the mission, of trying to help Srila Gurudev to distribute this brain. 
I remember my sure Prabhupada used to say that my purports are my ecstasies. So when such a great Acharya like Shiva Gurudev translates books and writes these books, all of gives these lectures, these are his ecstasies, his Brajrasi ecstasies are being poured into these transcendental literatures. And he wants them distributed all over the world so that everyone who comes in contact with them can get a taste of this brain, this brain that Mahaprabhu brought. Shiva Prabhupada used to tell us, even if they just look at the book, if they appreciate it, if they bring it to their home and give it shelter, whatever they do with the book, this is great, they make great spiritual advancement. So Shiva Gurudev is trying to give every living entity, every living entity a chance to come in contact with this praying. This is the mission of such a great personality as Shiva Gurudev. He wants everyone to come in contact with this praying. The ecstasies that he's poured into these books, he wants everyone to touch them, to feel them, to taste them. This is his mission. And so we can all assist him in this mission. We can all help him to distribute this praying everywhere by distributing his literatures and opening up centers and holding festivals and bringing as many people as possible to come in contact with this most merciful Brajrasi praying, the Trila Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is distributing through the agency of his most dear servant and associate, Sri Sri Mahal Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Jai Sri Gurudev Coming to this material world, we pray to Sri Guru, Trayasvabho Jagannath Guru, Samsara Mamina Tattamam Kalatvastam Chatamaham Sharanam Gataha O Gurudev, seeing that this material existence is just like a blazing forest fire that resembles the devouring mouth, the devouring teeth, jaws of the god of death, Yamaraj, I take shelter of you and pray to you for deliverance. He has that power to take away our innumerable births of sinful and pious reactions which keep us in the chain of birth, old age, disease, and death. And what does he give? He Sri Guru Jnana Dadi Nabandhu Swananda Dattak Hey Sri Guru, oh Sri Gurudev, we pray that Gurudev is a Stotra Sattva 1083. 108. 1 and 8 makes 9. 9 is the ultimate number. So Sri Guru is the ultimate number of Sri's. Sri means all opulence, all material opulences, beauty, fame, wealth, strength, knowledge, renunciation, all mystic powers, or all spiritual opulences, and Sriya, the um, reservoir, he's the reservoir of the bestower of the service, transcendental service to Srimati Radhika. The ultimate Sri is Srimati Radhika and there are innumerable Sri's or Lakshmi's situated at the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika as her expansions and Sri Guru is the embodiment of her mercy. Hey Sri Guru Gyanada, he gives Gyan or transcendental knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge of what is this illusory world? What is God? What is love? What is Prem? What are the degrees of Prem? What are the different kinds of Bhakti? Everything he gives, Pragyan, he gives all knowledge. Who I am, where I'm from, where I have to go, how can I get there? Hey Sri Guru Gyana Dadi Nabando, Swananda Dutta, he gives his own bliss. The bliss that's in his heart 
from serving in the association and assembly of Sri Mati Radhika, that place he comes to give us. There's a very beautiful incident that took place in Italy during Srila Gurudev's Harikata festival there. He was on his morning walk with uh, Sri Pai Prajanath Prabhu and Lila Paroshitam Prabhu and he was on his japa walk and he began chanting one verse. Evam Vrita Swapriya Namakritya Jatanuraga Jita Chitta Murchaya Hasya Dyuto Raudati Raudikaya Dyun Madhavan Rityati Lokabhadya That is, those who are absorbed in Prema Bhakti, they completely forget their bodily condition of life. Sometimes laughing in ecstasy, sometimes weeping in separation from Krishna, sometimes dancing just like a madman, chanting very loudly the holy name and experiencing their beautiful relationship with Krishna. They don't care for any outside influence. He was thinking of the gopis, his worshipable deities. And at the same time, he saw one very old Alsatian dog. And that dog came up to Gurudev's car, looked inside, and very sadly walked away and went to the next car. So Gurudev explained, because he knows Krishna, Dasmin Bhagyantam Sarvamevam Bhagyantam Bhavati. Because he knows the absolute truth, all relative truths are known to him. So because he knows the mind of Krishna, the mind of Sri Radha, he knows the mind of all living entities, including that dog. He said, who is that dog? Why did he come up to our car and then sadly walk away? When he was young, he had a master. And that master, the dog is thinking, my master used to bathe me and feed me and caress me. Then what happened when the dog got old, the master was thinking, this dog is too old, he's no fun anymore. So how can I get rid of him? So the master brought the dog to the sea seaside, to the beach, and taking him advantage of the fact that the dog ran to chase a female dog, while the dog was gone, that master drove away in his car and never returned. So that old Alsatian dog, who now his eyes are full of the mud, which is a mixture of his tears and the dirt from not being cared for, he would go to the shore of the ocean thinking, I should die without my master. But what if my master comes back tomorrow? or soon, and he sees that I'm not here, he'll feel so sad, so no, I better not die. So he walks up to the waves, then walks back, then walks forward, then walks back, sometimes looks at different cars to see if that's his master, then in sadness, walks away. So Gurudev said, the masters of this material world, they'll never return. They're only interested in their own sense gratification. Masters, beloveds, all associates, they only want their own sense gratification and we, when we can no longer fulfill that, they leave. But if one has Krishna as a master, like the gopis, and thus he was singing that prayer, Evambrita Swapriya Namakritya, the gopis in great separation from Krishna, when he left Vrindavan, were also wanting to leave their lives, but thinking if Krishna comes back, day after tomorrow, like he promised, and he sees that we're gone, that we're dead, then he'll feel so sad, surely he'll die too. Anyone who has that kind of master, he'll always be happy. He'll always have the association of such a loving master. So Srila Gurudev, this is the bliss in his own heart, feeling the happiness of Radharani meeting separation and the sadness of her feeling separation from Krishna, this bliss in his own heart, he came to give. 
Swanand Dutt Karunayaka Sindhu, and he's the ocean, wanting to give this great treasure and free us from all illusory loves, which only give us frustration. The more we try to love in this world, the more we feel frustration and remorse. Even if our beloved loves us throughout their whole life, then they die and leave us miserable. So he is Karuna Sindhu. He's the ocean of mercy. Vrindavanasinamhitavataram. He's a resident of Vrindavan and knows personally Krishna's mother and father and all the coward boys and the cows. This is where he came from, Hitavataram. He's the incarnation of all auspiciousness. Prasida Radha Pranayapuchara. And he's come to preach the love of Srimati Radhika. This is his mission, why he came to this material world, why he came to Malaysia. When he was in the Philippines just a few days ago, on the first day, he, he gave two days of a festival, on the first day he said, you are human. And I want to tell you that it took you many, many millions and millions of births, Lakdwa Sudulabam, Lakdwa Sudulabam, Sampavanti, that it took you millions and millions of births to come to this human form of life. Although this is, birth is very rarely achieved, it's very temporary, it affords the highest benefit. What is that benefit? One can be free from the cycle of birth, old age, disease and death, the threefold miseries, miseries caused by other living entities, miseries caused by this body and mind, miseries caused by material nature, and one attains that highest benediction of becoming a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. So before this body lays down and dies, to Anam Jajay, immediately one should start that. He said, I'm going around the world telling you, you really will die. Before this death comes, you must become fully Krishna conscious. And on the second night, he said, I want to tell you what your goal of life is. Because without knowing that goal of life, you cannot engage in the process to attain it. And he began to teach who Arista Devi is and what is the process to attain that goal. So throughout this festival, Shilver Dave will be teaching us the process, and not only that, giving us the strength to perform it. Prema Bhakti Yavahoyte, Avidya Vinasajati. He destroys all ignorance by giving us transcendental praying. He's so powerful because he's the manifestation of Krishna, Nityananda Prabhu, Shuladhyasdev, as you'll experience in these next days. Go Premanandi. Shishimad Bhakti Vedanta Trivikam Maharaj. मेरी माई शिक्षा गुरु इन माई लाइफ आई वॉज इन पुलिस सर्विस एट दैट टाइम पूजापात भी कम महाराज हिज नेम वॉज राधानाथ राधानाथ विथ Pujya Patri Narottamanam Nishing Maharaj Bhakti Kusal Nasi Maharaj He went to preach and to beg something from me in my office. Then I knew that here a party from Navadip has come to preach. I heard that they are explaining about Prahlad Charitra. Then I went there and I heard Prahlad Charitra. But I did not know Bengali. So after that class, Parampujyapad Bhakti Kamal, Kamal Masudan Goswami Maharaj. He used to sit with me, whole life discussing 
What is Prahlad Charitra? Why we have taken birth and why? What is our aim and object of our life? For seven days there. And hearing this by mode of life was changed totally. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra. Law Matre Sadhu Sangha, Sarva So I think that to begin my this transcendental life, Pujya Patra Vikram Maharaj, I have his associate, he is my Shiksha Guru too. He taught me how to sing, how to recite his slopes. He told me that you should learn Sanskrit, but I had no, I had no time. Always serving Guru Dev, cooking his washing cloth, making ready all his things. So I could not read Sanskrit. Though I don't know Sanskrit, but but. Serving of my Guru Dev wholeheartedly. Only this is my qualification. Well, and by that, in whole world, I am preaching the mission of our Guru Parampara. And by the, His mercy, I have collected so many. God is scholars <laughs> who are helping. There are so many more. In Grihast Bhakta also everywhere. So many are helping. Making, writing so many books, more than hundred. And so many Brahmachari with computers and so many <laughs> daughters helping me in my this preaching whole world. What is the mission or of Guru Pantha? Hmm. So I will tell in the last. First I want to hear something from his Siksha disciple. <laughs> what name? Damodar Maharaj. He should speak something. He has served him so many months. Guruve Gorachanda Radhika Janade Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama So first of all, I have to pronounce millions of times the Lord's feet of worship, O Sri Guru Dev, O Vishnu Pad, Sri Srimad Bhakti, Randarayan, Goswami Maharaj, O Swami Shikshi Gurus, Nichilila Pris, Sri Gauru Govinda, Goswami Maharaj, Nichilila Pris, Sri Bhakti, Bhavan Goswami Maharaj, Sri Bhakti, Nichilila Goswami Maharaj. So today is especially the appearance day of Nichilila Pris, Sri Bhakti, Nichilila Goswami Maharaj. So, he appeared on the Dwadasi, so in India they followed Dwadasi today, so we are following the appearance day of Sri Maharaj today. No? So in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna explains that one who understands the transcendental nature of my appearance, my birth, and my pastimes, they are taught the Puna Janma Niti Maiti Samajuna. He never takes birth again. In the same way as Krishna's appearance and activities are transcendental, then a Vaishnava Mandan. The Vaishnava also he never appears in this world because of the reactions of his past activities. He appears in this world out of to give mercy to the fallen jivas of this world. So we want to hear so much from Maharaj, from Guru Dev, therefore I'll just speak very quickly. That Sri Maharaj also used to tell me that when he went the first time to preaching to Gurudev's village, 
that time he said, from the beginning we always knew that he was different because he had so much interest in hearing Harikata. So Maharaj, if I'm not mistaken, appeared in a Brahmin family. His family were all worshipping Shadagram. They were very strict, even without worshipping Shadagram, they were not drinking any water in the morning. But they were not so much inclined towards the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, when he also met Sri Narottama Nandaburu, the same Vaishnava who preached to Sri Gurudev, like their Vatna Pradhaka Guru, then Sri Chaitanya also became greatly influenced and left everything and joined the Mark. So when he joined also, at that time there was so much opposition, especially from his family members and his wife. So every time he ran away to the mud, then again and again they dragged him back by the police or some other trouble. But his mind was very much determined, therefore no one could disturb his desire to do bhajan. Even though he was married also and had a child, still his attraction towards the mission of Sri Guru Gurang was so much strong, he could leave that and dedicate himself fully to the mission of his Gurudev. Sometimes we cannot understand Vaishnava, especially Gurudev. Therefore, Shikshi Guru is very much necessary for us. Because Gurudev, there is so much Mahajara in the relationship with the spiritual master. Gurudev says you cannot reveal everything to the Guru. For example, I am Sanyasi. If I go to Gurudev and say, Gurudev, there's one girl I like, what can I do then? Maybe Gurudev will kill me or beat me. You cannot reveal those type of things to Guru. But to Shikshi Guru, because he's very much intimate, very much close. Because we take mantra from Guru, therefore our relationship is by that. But Shikshi Guru, we don't take any mantra. Then what is our relationship with Shikshi Guru? Some people may ask, why is Shri Maharaj? Why is he here with his Shikshi Guru? He did not take any mantra, he did not take anything. Therefore, the relation with Shikshi Guru is based purely on affection, intimacy. Therefore, Vishwam Bhagavad Guru Seva. Because we cannot approach Gurudev completely in our fallen state, therefore, Shikshi Guru will help us so much to understand our spiritual master. Therefore, those persons who give up the association of Vaishnava and try to independently serve Guru, that person will not be successful. Therefore, Gurudev always says, perform Guru. That person who performs Guru Seva, under the guidance of Vaishnava, that person's Guru Seva is always accepted. Otherwise, our whimsical attempts to serve Guru may simply end up in forms of sense gratification. That we should think, is my Seva being accepted by Guru or not? Am I performing what he wants me to do? Therefore, Shiksha Guru will be very much invaluable in that way for us. If I saw Srila Maharaj one time, one devotee asked me, has your Gurudev given you Siddha Pranali? So that time I said, no, no, I'm waiting maybe a few more weeks then Gurudev will give. <laughs> so then I told that to Gurudev in Istanbul. Oh, he asked me, had I taken Siddha Pranali? And I said, no. And Gurudev said, no. If anyone asks you, have you taken Siddha Pranali? You should have said, of course I've taken Siddha Pranali. What is that? Trinala Pesu Nichina Tarori Vasvishina Manana Manana Kirtanya Sadahari. So in Srila Chirikamaraja's character, we could see that character, how much he was extraordinarily money, detached, more taller than a tree, more humble than a blade of grass. Because you step on a blade of grass and after a few days it goes up again. You know? Like someone may insult us and we have turned out a piece and outside, Prabhu, but inside we're thinking, I can't wait to get him back or strike back. But Vaishnava is more humble than a blade of grass because you tread on them, they always remain. Very, very humble. They didn't know Srila Chirikamaraja was in such a senior position. Still, he was very much renounced. He never would accept disciples. He was always very detached. Even in old age, he did not like to take the help of any sevak. Therefore, no sevak ever really could stay with him because he not needed anyone's help. And Allah one of the symptoms of perfect Vaishnava, they're not lazy in the execution of their own devotional service. The Maharaj was very humble, very, very humble. Uh -huh. Even though he was so much senior, he used to treat all of us like his brothers also, like his children also. So he was always ideal Vaishnava. So if we could take some of his qualities, even one drop, then our lives would be successful. 
Kanaka Kamani Pratishta Bhagani, Sayana Shakta Say Sura Bhakta. Srila Bhakti said on Saraswati Thakur said, Who is a pure devotee? That person who is unattached to the three tigers. The tigers of women, the tigers of wealth, and the tigers of Pratishta. Name and fame. So Srila Chukka how much he was strong, especially at one point, about improper association with the opposite sex. And Maharaj, oh, really, when we were with Srila Chukka Maharaj, that time I'm afraid even to talk with ladies in the dream, because Maharaj so much strong on that point. Maharaj was never interested in collecting funds. Even if people would give him donations, then he would always engage that in the service of Guru Goranga. And especially he was very much disinterested in collecting Pratishta, name and fame. Even on his Vyasa Puja in Devananda Gorima, on this day, they used to make one big seat for Maharaj and all they used to come and sing Vaishnav Tahu. But Maharaj would not sit on the seat. No, he would sit down and the pictures of his god brothers, Srila Gurudev and Srila Bhama Maharaj, he would put their pictures on the asa and he would sing Vaishnav Thakur. Vyasa Puja is for them. So his qualities are so much unlimited. Of course, he's one thing also I noticed, we're so much anxious to advertise ourselves as Rasik Vaishnavas. Sometimes we think if I don't mention Radharani's name at least 50 times in a class, then people will think that I'm not really a Raghunuga Bhakta and not a real follower of Gurudev. If that happens, then people will stop giving my donations and they'll stop respecting me. Then in order to advertise our greatness, we try so much to speak about Srimadhi Radhika and the Gopis, even though we're completely unqualified. But Srila Bhaktivedanta and Srila Kumaraj was unlike that. We should not distribute the highest thing just to attract the lower members. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also warned against that. Anarika Chacha. We should not discuss subject matters of which we are not qualified. That even though Srila Maharaj was such a qualified personality, he would not talk about all these very much high topics. He used to give us, which was very much needed for us in our present situation. When Guru would, when Srila Chirukha would speak so much about you're not the body, giving up material enjoyment, especially giving up desire to enjoy in this world. And many people used to think, oh, Gurudev is, oh, Srila Chirukha has some opposite mood of Srila Gurudev. But Srila Gurudev said that is not possible. He said Srila Chirukha is his Shiksha Guru, then how possible it can be in a separate mood. But we should understand that when we cultivate devotional service, there are two aspects of devotional service, Krishna and Usilana. One is cultivating that which is favorable devotion. That is called hmm? cultivating that which is favorable has two divisions. <coughs> Not that. Cultivating which is like shravan, kirtan, etc., and also giving up which is unfavorable devotion. This is also included in the cultivation of activities which are favorable to Krishna's service. So Silamar is so much humble. Just one last thing I want to say. When last time we saw Maharaj in another week before his sickness, <coughs> he was lying in his bed and he was, then myself and there, Amal Krishna Pundarikuru, a few others, then Maharaj was saying, I do not like Krishna's name. I do not like to chant the name of Krishna. But I should chant because I know it's good for me. And Maharaj was, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So he was always like that, so much encouraging us because we are very much weak. We are always, we have a tendency to disobey the spiritual master. There was Sri Chirika Maharaj, he was such an ideal Shiksha Guru, why? These days so many so-called Shiksha Gurus are moving everywhere. I am the representative of Sri Narayan Maharaj, you know, I am the representative of Prabhupada. But really, are they representing? The Sri Chirika Maharaj, the Shiksha Guru is that person who puts you firmly on the feet of Diksha Guru. The Shiksha Guru has no business taking the faith of the disciple away from the feet of Diksha Guru onto himself. Such a person who does so is completely unqualified to act as a Shiksha Guru. There were members, Sri Chirika Maharaj, and whenever we had any problem and we would come to him, Sri Chirika Maharaj would only give one instruction. Always follow the order of the Divine Master. Always please and follow the order of the Divine Master. Maharaj never gave any second opinion. You should do this or do that. Then he would, when our minds would wander away from the feet of Gurudev, he would drag and put us very firmly again on his feet. Therefore today, we pray to him. Wherever he may be serving Radha Krishna, he can also always keep us firmly on the feet of Gurudev and under the shelter of the Vaishnavas. Go Prema Anandi.
Calcutta one hospital and my Guru Maharaj he also slipped and he's broken his hip and he was also admitted in another hospital. Guru then three of them had so much intimacy, three of them took some the same time. So Guru they went to visit both of them arriving in Calcutta, same day Guru they got severe heart attack. Then Guru they also admit another hospital, very close to Kujivati Victor Maharaj. When Guru the situation became stable, because Pujyavati Mukai told, I want to take my last breath in Navadhita, nowhere else. He told us so many times. And he used to tell, I want to die in Navadhita as an unknown and unseen. So when Guru Dev's health is stable, then I went to Dr. I told Guru Dev, then Guru Dev ordered me, you can visit the doctor, can consult the doctor, then better to take him to Navadhita Dham. Then I went to the doctor and told him that I want to hear, I want to consult you, but not as a physician. I want to consult with you like my elder brother. So I told the situation about Gurudev and all three of them. And his I told that Pujavati my desire was to be in Navadhita last time. So what is your opinion? Shall I take him to back to Navadhi Dham? Then he told, as a doctor, I will not ask you, give me permission to take him to Navadhi Dham. That is against the medical theory. But when he told me as before, in the beginning he told me, you want to consult with me as your elder brother. So I am telling you, better take immediate, still time is there to take him to Dham. After a few days, he could not take him. When I went to him and told Pujyavati Vikram Maharaj, we will take you to Navadhi Dham, you can be very happy. His whole body became illuminated. Then we take him to Navadhi Dham. arranged to take him to Navadhi Dham. And he is so much affectionate to Gurudev, but he was so much glorified to Gurudev also. I have seen even in Navadhi Dham and in Mathura, after Mandalarati, he will come and do pranam to Gurudev's food and sandal. I told Maharaj, what are you doing? Chuk, chuk, don't tell to Maharaj. This, what I do, I want to do, let me do. Don't disturb me. When Gurudev joined in Mott, then they used to go for preaching to Param Gurudev. One, and Param Gurudev, at that time preaching technique was, there is some projector and so many slides there, they will put on slide, at that time not electricity so much in village, by, by light, by as a light, they will put on that and it focus on the screen. So one village and another village have to go. The Guru they forgot to take the projector and the screen. And now next day, after midday lunch, Guru they running on the paddy field. You can know, where are you going? Where are you going? Come here, come here. Then Buddha not want to stop, want to go and get that back from that another village, one village, before the previous village. Then Pujyavati I told, listen, I thought that you forget something about projector, so, yes, but don't worry, I will manage it. Then Pujyavati I told to Param Guru there, Today little cloudy and rain may come. If you saw projector, so here, if rain comes, then everything will spoil. Better you can speak some Harikatha. Today not say, okay, when I tell you, then that thing. <laughs> but it was so tall. Next day with the morning, I went and bring it back from there. <laughs> and began to laugh so much. And when I have I used to go to Pujyavati Vikram Maharaj in Navadhi Parikram Maharaj to him pranam. At first he will slap me on my back and he then embrace. We are very happy that you are in Pujyavati Narayan Maharaj. So nothing to worry that although he has so many operations have been done, but I want one person like he can take care of him. So I am very happy. So without your asking, I give my whole blessing. 
you can be your bhajan and sir Shila Maharaj, no problem will come to you. I am taking all your responsibility to whenever I go, his eyes become full of tears and embrace me and pass his love after that all these things. So many things to tell about him.